friends. Glad to see you made it. For we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. My friends, let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, O oh gracious God, our Father, who lives in heaven, O oh Father, bring your kingdom down here on earth. Let your will be done here, just as it is in heaven. Father, reign today your Holy Spirit upon this video and anyone who watches it. Reign your Spirit into their homes, their lives, and into their families. Give us today our daily bread. Oh God, forgive us. Forgive us always, Father, for our wrongdoings and our trespasses as we forgive those who hurt us and break us down. Oh God, do not lead us to, to, into temptation, but deliver us from the hand of the evil one. It is your kingdom, God. It is your love. It is your power. It is your name. It is you we seek. Each one of us. Come and give us the wisdom and the understanding and the light to see the path that takes us to you. In the holy name of Yeshua the Christ, the Christ of God, we pray. Amen. So I ain't so sure what I'm going to say today. <laughs> I don't know really who I'm speaking to, and maybe somehow, some way, today, I, I don't know, something tickled in my mind, tickled in my heart, and boy, you look funny, and I just got moved to, to watch this video, and, and what moved me, I don't know, but, but here we are watching today, and, and so I want to start with, with a parable, and, and, and listen. I didn't write this parable, but, but it came from someone. But, but I see the hand of God working through all men, through all creation, wherever it may be. So, so let's hear and listen to this parable and, and see. And hopefully I pray by the end of this video that, that this will make sense to you and you will understand it. So... The village got raided, and all the people got captured or killed, except for two, two little children. The boy who could not see, and the girl who, who could not walk. Neither could have, have escaped without each other, without each other's help. And the miracle of their escape is their vision and their determination. The lame girl was guiding the blind boy through wild fields, forests, tunnels, stairways, and doorways, while the boy was carrying her sight. The ruins of the abandoned castle was the last safe place left for them to start a new life. And so let's explain that parable. <laughs> let's make it flesh and blood. And come to really speak about Jesus and God and His love and the marriage between God and humanity. And God's whole plan of what, what He's been doing since the moment he decided to do something. For in the beginning, there was nothing. Just a cesspool of nothingness. And God, through, through might and wisdom and love, brought being to that cesspool of nothingness. And created all things. Both the heavens and all that are in it, and the earth and all that is in it. Both that we can see and unseen. And so, God, through that love, in the being of love, He gives life to us. And what is love? And that's the question. What, what, what is love to us? What, what does it look like? What's the definition of love? Where, where does love come from? You know, think about it. Put your mind around what is love? You know, 
is is love a newborn baby or, or maybe maybe it's the mom of the newborn baby as for the very very first time she looks into the eyes of that newborn baby is that love is that love what about maybe uh, uh, as a woman and a husband a wife come together to, to become one is that love the, the creation of another human being is that love I mean what well, think about it what's the definition of love if love came how would I know what it looks like what it is what is love Is it an old man, an old woman, who have lived their lives together? And there they are at the end of their life, and one is about to part into the next life. As they look into each other's eyes, as they made it through the sickness and through the health, as they wanted to see one another and the love they had for one another as that was the last thing they saw before they separated into an eternal life. Is that love? Well, where does love come from? And if God made love, and if God is love, and he gave us those things so that we would know what love felt like, what love looked like, wouldn't we know what love meant when God gave His one and only Son for us? I mean, think about it. As you moms and dads or whoever you may be, and you have your child, maybe a newborn child, that you've looked into his eyes for the first time and felt that enormous love. Oh my God, what love I have for my baby. And then give that baby up for, for a sinner, for, 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 for an a, a evil person, for, for me, for, for a bum on the road, for an alcoholic. And would you do it for that? I mean, think about it, of what God did for us. And we've got to wrap our mind around what, it, what is love. You know, and, and that's the thing. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And, and I want to re remind you that, that, that in the beginning, God was the Word, and the Word was God. And then the Word became flesh. Jesus Christ is the flesh of God. In the beginning, He was in heaven with God. And then the Word blew out from God. And Jesus Christ is the Word that blowed out from God, that created all things. When light came to be, it was Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of God, dancing in great joy. For the light. It was Jesus standing there at the right hand of God as he painted in all the beauty and the color that we can see here on life in, in earth. And so, think of it like this. <laughs> so when the word went out from God, Jesus was with God in heaven. And the word left heaven, and it came, and it searched, and it created, and it began making, and creating all things, everywhere, giving it order, and a place to be, telling the sea, stop, and the sea would stop, and the land to grow, and the land would grow, and trees, life, and all things began to happen, and to create. But there in heaven was a whole bunch of heavenly beings.
For the, our Lord, our God, is Elohim. He's plural. Seven spirits of God. So he's, he's a being of he's many things. But we won. But what? Kind of like, like us. We have seven senses. We can, we can taste, we can hear, we can see, we can speak, we can smell. And there's seven, and all that makes a person. Whoa! God has seven spirits, but, but he's one. He's Elohim. So there's all these angels sitting there in heaven. And they were amazed and craving. But, but they had the same promise of us. And the same hope as us. For work. Jesus Christ was, and then he was not. And then he was to come. So the glory of God, listen. To, to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, of the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on that earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So God came up with an idea. As he's saying, this is cesspool of nothing. I want to create a man in his image. And how am I going to do it? To throw us dust of the earth, through a thought, through a will, through love, and through dust of the earth, through the impossible of God. That is God. He does the impossible. The, the stuff that no man could think of, no man could imagine, and no man could carry out. The impossible. So God comes up with the idea, I'm going to make a man, I'm going to make a God, I'm going to make a son of God, an immortal being, just like me, out of dirt from the earth. And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens. And every living thing that moves upon the earth. Right? Move over. Move over to chapter 3. And he says, and now we're talking the snake and the man and the woman. Right? And they have the serpent. And the man. So there's two seeds. There's two seeds here on earth. That there's the sons of God and there's the sons of the serpent. And so that's the thing. God needs to show us the difference between good and evil before we can become a God like him. So the serpent comes about. It introduces himself. And isn't it interesting how Moses comes out of Egypt? The serpent. Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert. And anyone who looked on that, who was healed from the poisonous snakes, so saw the Son of Man be be lifted up so that anyone who gazes upon him shall be saved. And isn't it interesting here in that story as Moses introduces death to humanity. We didn't know we were sinners until Moses told us we were sinning. 
until the law was birth, birth until it came forth. And that's what the law produces, is the death. It produces the evil. Try and follow the law. And you're going to find yourself evil because you can't follow the law. He, even Paul cried out to, to God. I, I got this thorn in my side. Three times he cried out with all his heart. Take this thorn from my side, this messenger from Satan. He's tormenting me, torturing me. You know, you got a festering sore sword in your back, and every time you think it's going to heal up, every time it gets better, here's Satan's messenger just poking it in there and ramming it a little more. You know, oh, Paul, do you really think you're in connection with God? I mean, just think about it. You just stood there and watched men stealing, be, be destroyed by stones. I mean, think about it, Paul, as he's poking them right in the ribs. Come on, are you really that worthy to, to be a child of God? Who do you think you are, Paul? You know there's nothing but anger in you. I mean, come on. you got sin in you. And Paul, with the love of God, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, of wanting to, to be holy, it dawned on you that the battle is not out there against flesh and blood. It's right here. It's in my heart. I can't get rid of Satan. I can't get rid of it. I can't get rid of me because I sinned. Oh, what a wretch I am. I sin and I can't stop sinning. Take it away. The thorn in my flesh. And finally, Jesus answers him. And Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. <coughs> it's through your weakness, I am strong. It is through the pain. It is through the, the sorrows, through the torture, through the thorn, you return every day crying out for relief so that I be glorified. I want to rescue you. I want to restore you. See, we got to believe it. We are redeemed by God. We, we are healed by God. It's not waiting to heal us. We, we have been healed. Sometimes it comes through, through the gathering, the pulling in to God. The closer we get to God, the, the greater the healing becomes. Right? The, the woman with the bleeding issue sits out at her home, tries out to all men, exhausts herself in all the, any form that she could, pays out the gold and the silver, doctors and pills and everything, but yet the bleeding is here 12 years later. But, but even Jesus doesn't even realize she's there. He doesn't even understand. She's just drawn in. But by the love of God. And I don't even have to talk to him. You don't have to. It's just if I could touch him. I will be healed. Just to be close to God. It is enough. And, and through the pain and the sorrow. There you draw. There you become. And you look. Where oh where. Is this refuge coming from? Where am I going to get relief? Who's going to save me from the pains and the sorrows of my life? And God begins to draw you and pull you in. That's the thing. As God and Adam and Eve. Let's listen here at uh, chapter 3. Verse 15, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain, you shall bring forth children. You shall desire, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And that's the thing. We, the men, the flesh, here on earth, we are the weaker vessel. God, our Father, our desire is always going to be for Jesus Christ, for, for the salvation of God. Yeah, bearing children, that, that, that's not just both physically bearing children, bearing children from God is painful. It's hurt. 
It's suffering. It's through the anguish of our life. So that we're born into the heavenly children God wants us to be. Because it's through the sin of our lives. It's through the law of Moses recognizing that, that we're evil and we're dirt. And through our sins that, that that causes the pain and the suffering that breaks us down to the point to turn as that rod breaks us and shatters our feelings, shatters our hope, shatters everything so we have nothing left but our husband to cling on to, our God, our dad. Right? Jesus says that they, they were with shame in the beginning. So we're naked. But, but he clothed them with skin. So in the beginning, there they were in heaven. And God sends Adam out of heaven, Jesus Christ, to the earth to till the ground to make it fruitful until one day that the children of God, that the earth would birth, could handle, could mind, put their mind around God, could handle the, the ability, have the ability to, to have God dwell in them. For we are the holy temple of God. So, so here's God been on the earth, Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, the Christ of God, working upon the earth, tilling the ground, getting it ready and ripe. For, for thousands of years, He's been here working and working throughout all types of men, through Moses. Right? God moves Moses and the people of Israel. Come out of Egypt. Come out of that snake. And we'll give you life. Now let me show you. Now that you know the difference between evil, let me show you love. Let me show you life. Let me show you God. The different, the good. And he pulls them out. And there they are right at the, at the ocean. Trapped. Nowhere to go. And here the mighty army of Pharaoh comes to barrel them down. To destroy them all. No prisoners left. Just, just leave them all. Kill them all. They have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. Hopelessness. Darkness. A great thick cloud of depression comes upon the people. Oh my God. They cry out. What did you do Moses? Bring us here to die in the wilderness? We could have died there in Pharaoh's land in Egypt. At least we would have died with a full belly. He drug us out here just to be crunched by the army of Pharaoh. But Moses had, had faith. He had a promise that God would deliver them. The same way God gave Noah. I'll deliver you, Noah. Do you believe me? Just build me a boat. And he did. He told Moses, I'll deliver you, Moses, and all my people. Do you believe me? And he did. Jesus Christ comes, Hey, hey, I'll deliver you from all things, even death. Just like I did when I ripped open the ocean. Just like I did when I climbed on the boat with Noah. And that was the plan of God as he's making and creating men and children for God. A vessel acceptable for God's spirit, for all seven spirits in the fullness of God to dwell inside of a man so that they may be made and be like God. Time went along, time went and through and came about and Jesus Christ came in flesh and all the word 
and all the Spirit, and all the hard work, and everything God had been doing, and everything Jesus Christ had been creating, and doing, and saving, and delivering all the time, now became flesh, now became a man, now became a solid object that we could see, feel, and touch. And that man, the glory of God fulfilled God's will. That day when he rose from the dead. For he was, then he was not. And then he came to be. See, in, in heaven, there's Jesus crawling up, walking up the stairway to heaven. Boldly and proudly, or with no shame, or with no, no guilt. As he climbs up to the stairs and, and hits onto the door, on those great ancient doors, the gates of heaven that have been locked and protected by the cherubim, cherubim for many, many thousands of years since the beginning of creation. It had been protected, taken care of. And as the Lord of God goes and pounds on that door, and boom, and boom, and boom. All the men and women and the angels there in heaven were worshiping God day and night over the throne of God, worshiping and loving God. And that boom wound and came out, boom, and boom. And silence went throughout all the heavens. Nothing but, but silence. And again, boom, and boom, and boom. And finally, someone, a brave soul, somewhere there in heaven, cries out. Who dares knock on the door of God? Who dares knock on this door? And Jesus Christ screams out with glory. I am the King of glory, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of gods. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Open these doors, all your golden gates, you, you ancient doors. Lift up your heads, raise yourselves up. For the King of Kings has come home. Open those doors. And with a mighty shout and with a mighty roar, heard from all creation, every piece of creation throughout the heavens and the earth, the stars and the moon, the sun. And even us here today screamed out and cried, Glory, glory be to God! The Lamb of God has been slain. The Lamb of God returned. He was. He was not. And He has come. Oh, glory be to God! And all the elders and everybody in the heavenly realms cast down their crowns to Jesus Christ as He walks up to take His seat on the throne of God in the heavens of God. His, his, his temple and the temple of God makes this earth to look like nothing. It's done. There's nothing on this earth that can compare to the riches and the glory of God in His throne, in His temple. And there, Jesus, who with great pride and great glory, great honor, boldness, Walk straight up to do God in the throne of God. Sits down on the throne of God and says, It is finished. It is finished. And God looks to him and says, Yes, my son, it is done. It is finished indeed. And that's the thing. It is the first payment of God's blessings, God's gifts, God's love to the children here on earth. He is His name and the knowledge 
that we are the children of God. And every time the Son of God, the sons of God sit on the throne of God, all creation cry out and worship God every hour, all the time. Glory, glory be to the Son of God. Glory be to God. It's like God's now. God's now he's installing that payment as he sees his child a long way off as he's coming home from a journey, a journey of waste, a journey of I took it all and I flushed it down the toilet. I, I lost it all my life, my dignity, my respect, my everything. But here God is from afar off looking to his son and to his child. Look! Here he comes! Here he comes! He's coming! Kill the fattened calf! My son! My son was dead! But now he is alive! Rejoice! Rejoice, my children! Our son, our child was dead, but now is alive! My God! My God! Jesus Christ came, and, and the last things, one of the last things he tells the disciples before he ascends into heaven with his full body. His children, I, I give you the authority, the, the blessings of God to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion, take over dominion of this earth and all that is on it. For it has been a gift to you from God for your love and your mercy. And it was on that day it came true. God said, look, we made him just like us. Just like us. In the image of God, we made them just like us. And the glory of it all is Jesus Christ and the gift of him well, as he says, I did it in the beginning. I'm so powerful, I'm so mighty, I created the end before the beginning. Not even Satan himself, not death, not sin, not man, no principality, no thing on this earth, no thing in the future. Nothing can take us from the hand of God, for we are a body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And, and the two shall become one. God left the Father in the heaven so that we, as we left our mother's womb, would find the Spirit of God one day somewhere. And the two would become one. Every man on this earth has breath, has sight, has love, has a child, has babies. Because God gave you the love and the desire and the will to love life. For it is Jesus Christ who gave life to all creation. That was the will of God that they, one day man would be like God. And Jesus Christ is God. That's the image of God. That's what God wants us to be. Be like our Father. Be like Jesus Christ. Or live in love. Walk in love. Because worthy, worthy was the Lamb who laid down his life and bought, purchased men for God. And that's the thing that in our lives one day we can walk up and boldly as Jesus Christ walked up boldly to the throne of heaven and pounded on that door. Is it no different than him as we are the temple of God here on earth as he is here today pounding on your heart. Come, let me in, O ancient doors. Let me in. Raise up your heads and know God has won the battle. He has won. Can we trust it? Can we trust Him? Can I trust your word? That word that says you love me? Peter asked Jesus as they're there on this boat in a great storm. 
And there he comes walking out on the water. Is that, what is that, a ghost? Jesus Christ says, no, it is I. Do not be afraid. Take courage. It is I. Peter, if that is you, Lord, then tell me to come, and I will come. Can I put all my faith on a word that says you love me? And he says, come. And Peter gets out of the boat and begins to walk on the water. And it ain't until he looks away. What, what? Don't look to the right or to the left. Then you sink. And then you feel weak. And at the weakest, what happens And when we're weak? What do we do? We cry. We cry out to the Lord our God. For all those who cry to the Lord our God shall be saved. Peter says, help me. And immediately Jesus reached down to pull him out. Immediately. Why are you afraid? Why do you not believe? Have faith! The last thing Jesus says is take courage. I am with you. Every day to the end of time. I will be there with you. Take courage. It's a commandment of God. Be courage. Take courage. Be strong. Be strong. Jesus Christ was strong. He never wavered. We never waver. You can take my life. You can take my home. You can take all my stuff. But you can't take my faith in God. He's my rock. He's my salvation. And I will put my life in the hand of God that delivers men from the pits of hell. Jesus says, I have the key. I have the key that no man can shut. I have a key to a door that no man can open but God himself. And God already opened the heavens. He opened the doors. And he's opened them now, knocking here in hell. Come on, children. Turn it open. Open that I may come in. My, my burden, my, 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 my yoke is light. It is easy. What does that look like? Give it to me and I'll carry it for you. That's what it looks like. Surrender it all to me. Surrender the money. Surrender the world. Surrender your life, the worries, the frustration, the anger. Surrender it to God so he may carry it. So he may carry it. It's the thing. It's the rib to the wife, the helper of God, was pulled out of the rib of Adam. Right? Jesus Christ was pierced in his side and from the blood came the healing. From the blood came the love. From the blood came the redemption. From the blood came Eve, God's helper. For we are the flesh of God. And if we're all together, one flesh, one nation under one God, God is our head. Jesus Christ is the head of the body of Christ. Then the only way to God is through love for God's children. We've got to have love for God's children. Enough love for God's children who were, were even if we were a blind boy. And a lame girl. Come on, girl. We're going to make it out of here through determination, through hope, through will, through love. Through I will not be denied. Come on. Get on my back so I can carry you. Now look for me. And we'll get through this together as the two became one. Where, to where did they find that refuge, that shelter, in the broken castle left for them? Is that not Jesus Christ? I'm going to tear down this temple and rebuild it in three days. So that there would always be a light on this earth. There will always be hope. There will always be a refuge. kingdom of heaven and everlasting life lives right there in your heart today because I know
you know what love means. Because it is God our Father that gave you the wisdom to know eternal life has no value. Has no value. Gold, silver, things of our hands, it has no value. It's beyond value. It's beyond imagination. Come and eat from God. Come and drink from God. Come, for God shall deliver you. Remember, those who are blessed by God, trust in God. They trust in Him. The word of truth lives in our heart. Remember that. See you next time.